Okay. Well, well, well. Part four. <laughs> Part four. Yes. Part four. Welcome to Our Generation with Melissa Shaw, where we educate, empower, and inspire. And again, this is part four. Uh, yeah, y'all been on my show four times. Nobody else. <laughs> and I appreciate y'all wanting to come on my show. That makes me feel special. Oh, yeah. Uh, special love. Yes, I love it. Huh? This is your show. I know, I know, but y'all, you know. I still sometimes think, like, is this really happening? Yeah, Am I really yeah. doing this? Every time, every time it's something different, every time it's something better, something about Yeah, yep, yeah, because, yeah. All right, well, we can start, I guess, go down the line, or do you want to hold the, the mic? Or, yeah, because you didn't want to talk last time, and finally you took your glasses off. Uh, that's, so I put tell, them on. No, nah, that's cool. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I guess reintroduce yourself for the new followers that don't know who y'all are. Well, I'm Keanu, John Keanu, the philosopher, CEO of Stack Over Shine. Oh, hold on, hold on. Why are you the philosopher? Oh, well, since a child, you know, we grew up watching the Boondocks and always kind of been the Huey of the group, you know, and I read a lot. I have a large book of collection and my knowledge has no bounds to things. I'm kind of the voice of reason. Or the controversial one at times when it comes to knowledge at times. So, yeah. the philosophy, you know, it's morally ambiguous. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and? <laughs> he did say he controversial. Did to make it like <laughs> or. <laughs> and or. The, okay, look. The controversial one <laughs> of the group. Yeah. Yeah, you like to definitely uh shake the boat. Yep. Let's somebody, somebody gotta say it. Yeah, well, we gotta have somebody in the group. And then next, we got Deshaun. What's good, y'all? My name Deshaun. I'm the architect. Per his uh, outfit, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just telling him. I know, I love it, but it's just like I've never I seen you dress that. like that. I like. appreciate that. You ain't caught me on a Tuesday. Oh Last my god, did this is Tuesday attire. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this, is, this is Tuesday, Tommy Tuesday. You know, <laughs> but now, nah, yeah, I'm the architect of the group. Uh, co-founder, COO, if you want to get into the technicality of the titles and stuff. Why are you the uh, architect? Yeah, why are you the architect? <laughs> uh, well, first I'm the architect because he made the nicknames. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then second, uh, well, I guess I'm the one that know how to put it together. I'm some sort of, uh, I guess, project manager yeah, however they kind of however manager, they right assume how, uh, <laughs> how I think and how I elaborate my thoughts and ideas and express yeah. myself and my personality so yeah I'm, I'm the architect yeah so see how you just try to put some stuff together before the uh <laughs> right the story, but, but nah, yeah. hey, as you should it's why we all here now nah, I'm Devante uh I'm the hustler of the group uh, they call me the hustler because I, I keep a lot of the back end stuff together Finances, the money moves, the next moves, uh, all the stuff y'all don't really see, that's, that's me. I love it. So speaking of controversy. Man. So that picture of us. Yeah. No, I'm not talking to him. No, I'm talking to y'all because I had somebody call me and it was like, what are you doing throwing up gang signs? It ain't no, I it said, ain't no gang it sign. It is not a gang sign. So for the public. I want, how did y'all come up with Stack Over Shine and what's the meaning behind the sign that y'all do? First of all, <laughs> there ain't no gang sign. I only say gang sign because we black. If a white person do it. Uh, but I did do it and they said, what are you doing? Now listen, you're, <laughs> you're, they question you. They question you. If I do that, <laughs> if I do that, I'm at Marion County <laughs> waiting for a trial to explain oh that to my them. God. I guess and put on the list. Unfortunately, but, uh, you're right. But no, nah, but first of all, you know, ain't no gang sign. That's what, because first of all, hand symbols are hand symbols. Like, this is white power now, apparently. Is it? Yeah. They put that on the list. Wow. If I do it, it's okay. If you do it, wow. they question you. You So, like, oh. if y'all see our logo, yeah, we made a star. You know, everyone's a star in the group. That's oh. just what it is. You feel me? It ain't no a situation in relations to all that. You know, people... 
assume that like we had one friend who simply didn't like it because it was red, but one in blue. He's like, nah, people are gonna like that because it's red, whatever. And you know, that's that street mentality and stuff when people be trying to think, oh, it's a gang or whatever. You talking about so you got problem our star being red. Why are you not marching to Macy's and telling them to take their red star down? Mm. Like that's BS. Are you right? Like, you gonna tell me, go take down their sign. Ain't nobody saying that but y'all. Mm-hmm. You're racially profiling us. That's mm-hmm. what that is at that point. Exactly. No, and that's that's to the point. And that's why I wanted y'all to talk about that yeah. because that's, you know, unfortunately things are perceived a certain way. Exactly. But you guys mm-hmm. are trying to change the narrative. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I wanted to bring that up. But I was like, are you kidding me? I said, I'll be a horrible gang member. I can't even <laughs> sign up right. Like, what? <laughs> Horrible what? Exactly. And y'all really want to blame somebody. Shout out to my girl Missy. Because at first, <laughs> we wasn't even trying to make, take her that far. But if y'all went to the masquerade ball, hey, she encouraged. And after that, everybody started doing it. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. I like <laughs> Miss India Brown as well. Yeah. Yep. Shout out Miss India Brown, Camilla, everybody at the ball. Yep. Next question? No, no, I mean, did y'all know? Yeah, I want y'all to chime in on that too. That was y'all got the philosopher. Yeah. That's all he had. <laughs> <laughs> but now the meaning behind the star, essentially, I mean, everyone is a star. Everyone is a, their own star within their own right, and um, we don't making it a hand sign thing is just uh, making it a, a life thing, like personal. Uh, mm-hmm. Excuse me, personifying yeah. it, you know. Mm-hmm. So like the concept of a star is essentially what you you building and becoming yourself and what you're trying to be. You know, it's not going to be like uh like what people are used to seeing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are some black men. You know, we are moving. We are doing what we do, and I, I suppose putting colors and, and and titles and and trying to make that comparison or whatever the case have you or whatever. I wouldn't allude anything to to trying to gang member it out you know yeah. but unfortunately that's what people assume when <laughs> a is, group of black is, men are moving you know yeah, it's it like are these guys extortionists are they businessmen and that's unfortunate for them to mm-hmm. for them to think that but that's just them uh being curious and wanting to get around it and want to do it they just don't want to be around something they don't know what it is mm-hmm. and uh we'll let y'all know first and foremost stack over shine is Nothing but positivity. We pushing the message and trying to get all other entrepreneurs, other mm-hmm. youth, uh, everybody involved in in their passion and what they genuinely want to do. And yeah, Stack Over Shine is all about that. We are about our growth. Love it. The world is bigger than Post Road. Yeah. You ain't lying. It's the hoes are speaking now. Uh, they kind of answered the start question. Uh, I can elaborate more on how we got started, how we became a group of three. You know what I mean? It was uh me basically. I was that person in the streets doing things I shouldn't be doing, doing all the negative stuff, and just being a young father. I had my first son when I was 13, 14 years old. Wow. So you know, being a young father and trying to take care of kids, pay bills, being out on your own, wanting to be out on your own, getting a car, gas, <clears throat> going to see your friends, buying diapers buying new cups because they don't like the last ones you just bought 20 <laughs> minutes ago. Now you got to go buy some more. And, you know, all them stresses on my back and just wanting to be able to be here for my kids and being able to be here for my family and the people who do love me and just finding a different route. Uh, sitting down at the table, you feel me? Pretty much everybody we kind of grew up with, having that conversation with them, like, what we doing? Like, we all sitting here. Doing nothing with our lives. You, you half of y'all grown, other half of us is young. We not trying to look up to this stuff, not trying to be a part of the the negative stigma, like you said, and just trying to leave something for the people that we got, the people that we trying to raise. Me mainly because I was a young father. I was 14, 15, yeah. 16, trying to raise a kid. Definitely. So yeah, it was definitely hard. Uh, yeah, just sitting at that table, we started off getting pallets and stuff. We kind of ran into a roadblock with that, with the pallets and things. Just uh be trying to branch off and expand, not really being knowledgeable of things, how to do things, how to operate. And it started pushing us to go to events and stuff. Just being outside, just trying to expand our knowledge in any way we can. Like He's a book reader, mm-hmm. he's a researcher, Google searcher. Mm-hmm. I'm a hands-on type person. He like, we all dress different, we all just three different people. I and it works it. beautifully for us because it's just like, 
You know what I mean? We can always just bounce off of each other and just, you feel me? That's just kind of what drawn us to be, you feel me? Who we are, like the three of us, like, it was just like that. We just wanted the same thing and just in different aspects of it, in different views of it, in different like hustles or hustling it a different way. And mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just kind of how we came about. Yeah. That's how it all started for real. So uh, Stack Over Shine, like the name, where'd you guys come up with the name? Uh, you gonna elaborate? I can elaborate on that too. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, to <laughs> again, just you feel me? Just being young and being so like involved with like social media and how social media is perceiving people and things like that. And just uh, so we started Stack Over Shine around like three years ago, going on four. So just yeah, yeah, you're right. It is for now. Uh, so just, you know, around that time, social media really started to like pick up and like started to just become a factor in people's lives. People really started to pay attention to it, like, and let it be a part of their lives, just as simply as put. And so we just was trying to, again, like, I'm not a social media savvy person. Dub really isn't either, or Deshaun. And Keanu is the, the social media king. So it's just like, I just wanted to kind of take away the social media kind of thing and what people perceive in like a like a, the diamonds the all the people with the nice cars like not everybody can get that not mm -hmm. everybody if everybody in the world can get that stuff man we all be living life we all mm -hmm. be happy we all be just doing our own thing but you know what i mean just being able to be other things like financially stable and being able to be a part of like a a company or just a business and just understanding that you can have your own like you can do it by yourself you going to clock in for a business at the end of that chain of command there's one person at the end of that chain of command or three and you could be that person you could be one of the people along the way you can be wh whatever it is you want to be whether you want to sell a, a, a rug a building an office space a t-shirt a shoe a sock you can be that person and if you need help and if you need to find that guidance or find that that um, that answer you've been looking for, like we're trying to be them people for you. Like we're trying to be the people that you can call on. And again, what are you trying to sell? A rug, nuts, chair, socks, shoes, shirt, phone, phone stand, table. We're trying to be them people for the community and be them trustworthy people. Cause not everybody feel like they can just trust young black men. Like you said, our star people calling you about that, like. They are gonna automatically perceive us as people. Man, they might I got not an attitude to real quick. I said, "What do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, like uh, y'all better, you better back up. You can't trust, but in our reality, Ooh. like, deep breath. I want to know that. No, no, no. Like, for real. Whatever. I just say it was a mixed up. Oh my god. Like, yeah. Next episode, I'm <laughs> yeah, but yeah, just yeah. trying to remove all the negative stigma on just the world at the time, just the business aspect, understanding that all these people that y'all seeing, definitely the social media thing was popping off of like the YouTube and people want to vlog their lives and stuff like that. And like, I mean, as simply as that, like you can do that and, and monetize your uh, videos or whatever the case is and make money off that, mm -hmm. make that your lifestyle. Might not make the money they make, but you could. You just put in the efforts, the time, the energy, and just have the want for it, the want to do the thing. That's the most important part. You can have the dedication, the motivation, all that shit, but you really just got to have the want to get up every day and chase that stuff. Like, that's the truth. Just, yeah. I love it. You got anything to say? That's a fact, though. Yeah. yeah. You got anything on that? Oh, <laughs> um, social media king i just want to clarify that. oh boy it's more so like 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 he was saying we started this during covid you feel me so that's where like the rise of tick really all these new celebrity stars off of like streaming and tiktok you know that came about because everybody was stuck in the house mm -hmm. now with me it's more so you could kind of say, and I'm going to take credit for this. I don't care. I may read and kind of cool a little bit because I read for me. You can ask them. Like, that's always been me. But people start asking me, hey, man, what kind of books are we like? But they ask me, like, in private. <laughs> like, man, you know, you make it sound like it's cool to read books. Did you just congratulate me on reading a book? Like, mm -hmm. nigga, what? But <laughs> it's not the norm. Yeah, I know that. But it's yeah. like, but also, you know, it doesn't matter if you read it, if you don't apply it like me. Everybody knows. I say what I want. I don't care. We never did. 
Yeah, we know. We know. So, on the social media press, like you guys, them before the business started, I always would say something outlandish on Facebook <laughs> and wouldn't care. You know, I, I'm a Facebook felon. I've been in jail for 90 days before, but so, but I also learned how to market myself mm-hmm. on Facebook, as you saw with the, and then I cut my hair. Yeah. Now, I'm going to clear that up. That was a complete accident. I just put my hair in a ponytail and everybody just assumed I cut it and I just got tired of people. I didn't cut my hair. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I only stopped because one, Vontae texted me, you cut your hair? <laughs> yeah, I cut my hair. I'm going to cut my too. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm playing. I'm playing. I didn't cut my hair. So, like, the places I work, they, like, work at the movie theater. You I know I recently quit there. So, I learned how to market myself and see how what grabs people's attention on social media. You know, like they said, McDonald's can market. They got the best burger in the world. But McDonald's is ass. But, they do not. <laughs> but the market and sell point, oh, they yeah, still selling millions of dollars. Absolutely. Yeah, like yeah, the dollars yeah, say otherwise. Dollars say, yep. So, like, even when y'all saw the episode of SpongeBob when they were selling chocolate. Oh, my God. That, but, no, it was a real marketing point they was making. Yeah. When it was, like, the chips is delicious, SpongeBob was like, they're absolutely not. But when they start selling chocolate bars, it can make you live longer. Remember the old lady? <laughs> oh, it can? And, and her daughter was like, do not encourage her. I don't want her to live longer. But, you know, it's stuff like that on my end. It's like I just learned the algorithm mm-hmm. of people. Like when you see me and everything, I know how to do stuff. When people see me in public, I know you. No, you don't. But mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just what that is on the social media standpoint. I just really know how to market something correctly. Yeah. That's all, folks. It takes skill for that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not It's mm-hmm. not an easy thing. And no. you might think you're on a roll with doing something, and then the algorithm flips you upside exactly. down, and you be like, what the hell just happened? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now you gotta Ain't nobody. I got zero likes. Like, what? <laughs> Yesterday was 500. For real. Now you That's how y'all feel today. today. Right. <laughs> nah, but I don't want y'all to get discouraged or get caught up in that, though. Yeah. You feel me as far as that. But I'm sorry to rewind it a little bit, but I want to go back to <laughs> The point that you had said saying like that's not the norm when he mentioned reading books. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I was thinking personally, what well if that's like a not a social norm and that's just a book, you know, like and he's telling other people and just showing and demonstrating this is just a book I'm picking up. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like that's what Stack Overshine emulates. Just simplicity of doing something that <laughs> might not be the norm. Absolutely. Saving money. Yeah. Like people normally don't save money. Mm-hmm. I, I could tell you, I know what was going on this weekend. They oh, wasn't oh. where we was at, so they was out there, you yeah, feel me, not absolutely. doing what we was on. But, uh-uh. but no, nah, but uh, to the point saying, though, like, if we just go to demonstrate things like making your bed up every day or, you know, actually being on time, you feel me, being aware or just following up to your word, you know, mm-hmm. things of that sort, these are – the things that are the norm, they're just not the social norm because everyone aren't, everybody isn't doing it right now. Yeah. So him picking up a book is just like, man, let me pick up a book too now. Mm-hmm. So if y'all gonna pick up a book because he picked a book up, all right, let's all get together. <laughs> Vontae right. figured the same though. If we gonna all put our heads together, you know, then let's demonstrate what it looks like putting our heads together. And I think you guys do that because people talk a lot. Okay, what does mm-hmm. it look like? You know, exactly. demonstrating, like you said, demonstrating what does that look like? Just like what we did on Friday night yeah. was beautiful, Great. you know, to be able to have ones be highlighted like you guys was. That doesn't happen at any vendor event. Yeah, man, that was a great event. Shout out uh, Ace for that. No, go ahead. And I agree like what brother was saying, too, like on the book situation. It was like one year more. I kept saying, how you know this? I read in the book. That was like my response for a whole year. But it's about what I do with it. Then I had a few friends. Oh, you think you better because you read. Mm. One, that's so stupid just saying that to somebody. But when I read books, I share the knowledge with everybody. Mm. Everybody can take something different. You know, that's just what that is. Yeah. A lot of stuff, if you actually sit down and read it, you don't understand it. And what made me really get to reading deeply was, one, it pulled me out of depression. That's why, like, 2020, I made the commitment to stop smoking. And that first month was hell. Yeah. But I replaced that habit 
with reading books. Now I can read a book in a week. Wow. Like 400 pages ain't nothing to me no more. How many books have you read in a year? Do you know? 40. Nice. I'm glad you ain't get that Cat Williams answer, boy. I thought you I have read. Um, have y'all been watching my book reviews? I'm just going down the list. I just did my most controversial one. Yeah. And then two, oh, I love people try to debate with me because I know they didn't read the book or not. Yeah. So I did the Communist Manifesto, right? And I actually learned that it was really polluted in history, how people manipulate it and everything. People try to comment on TikTok. It only works and all that. Did you read the book? No. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, quit talking to me at this point. Mm-hmm. Then people, oh, I don't read the 48 Laws. You use that to manipulate people. Do you tell your kids that Santa Claus is real for them to be good? <laughs> yeah, shut up talking to me. Right. That's yeah. different. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's not, not different. different. Yeah. And that's why I tell people, when you read something, you'll start seeing it. Like, this wasn't how I act now. You can ask them. This didn't happen overnight. It's a trial and error from mm-hmm. reading, understanding people, body language, how to conduct business with people, how... And I'm going to clear this up. I don't say nothing impulsive. I do everything with a purpose. If you really want to know me, anything I say, you say, like, oh, my God. It was intentional. It was. Yeah. yeah. Was. Marketing. <laughs> Marketing. <laughs> it was intentional. Marketing. I mean, think about it. When yeah. I said that Friday, who was y'all thinking about in the whole room? What's going on with Stack Over Sean? My point is done. <laughs> They're coming to us now. <laughs> That's marketing. Yeah. 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 I learned that from 50 Cent. Like, his book, that's what well, he did. Him getting shot nine times. Wow. And he got blackballed, whatever. His How to Rob song, he just dissed the whole industry. That brought attention to him. Mm-hmm. When he got shot, they thought he was over with. He dissed him again while healing. Mm-hmm. I said, like, yeah, that's marketing. That's how, even when Power Empire were competitors, he talked about Empire so they could talk about his show. I said, yeah, that's unconventional marketing, how you do things. Mm-hmm. Like I said, hey, business, it, it gets, it's crazy out here, yeah. especially with that. But I like how you said talking about the reading kind of helps you out of depression. Like, that is a big thing. Like, because I even struggled with depression when I had my accident. But prior to that, I had been reading books. And so I was able to tap into that knowledge that I had to help push mm-hmm. me through. You learn how to recognize it and deal mm-hmm. with it yep absolutely so what y'all are doing this year <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad you asked this question because we we've been getting that question a lot and uh we've been focused first and foremost mainly supporting people who really been intentional about following up and doing what they uh demonstrating and showing us and 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 following up and doing their own business work, you know, because it's a lot of hustlepreneurs that uh, let the hustle get the best of them instead of preneur, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've been supporting, been working on uh, helping everybody around us get their things started, platforms kicked off, uh, just demonstrating, showing accountability amongst uh, each other, getting these posts up, making sure the page is uh, doing what it's doing. But as far as what we got coming up, First, next month, we gonna uh, let y'all know right now, we intentionally set up a small intimate setting and we gonna be doing a paint and sit. So yeah, we gonna do it the Stack Over Shine way. We gonna make sure everybody get in there and do it. Y'all gonna see how we uh, set it up and stuff and the people that's gonna be involved to make that happen. I love it. And then uh, following that, later in the spring, we got in May, this is an official date, um, May 18th. No, excuse me. I want to say it said 13th through the 18th. We're going to be involved in uh, helping up an event set up downtown at the AMP. It's called, uh, oh, excuse me. I forgot the name of it. But I'm going to be working with the Learning Tree and DMI Hards, and they're going to be uh, hosting the a few a conference that's going to be going on over a few days and we're going to have a small section uh set up dedicated to the stack over shine and all the entrepreneurs that want to uh take that chance with us and work with us and setting that up it's going to be a big market a lot of people coming through so we're going to be involved in setting that up of course we got our juneteenth coming this year you know 
we could, yeah, uh, four. part June four team. on the Juneteenth. Nice. And then we're gonna be uh working in a couple ideas later in the fall, but as as far as the this finishing out this or those are the things we're gonna be looking at and get into. We're gonna be setting up um regular monthly courses, well not courses, I'd rather say uh classes where you'll be able to it's called poetic justice. I uh, introduced the idea to you a little minute ago where um it's going to be an intimate setting where entrepreneurs, people of our age and possibly younger, a little bit older, bridging the gap of the generations for sure. But to come over together and talk about music, movies, uh, intentional content that just like what we're from the east side. So a lot of everybody from our side of town, they can't express themselves enough to be able to depict what's going on in their life and express it how it's going on verbally correct. Mm -hmm. So if we have a song, maybe this song that they're listening to, they'll be able to describe what emotions they attach to in that song and then it's talk about it with everyone else. So yeah. I think that's important. We're going to be now, opening that up to everybody else. My daughter's friend was listening to a song and he's like, yeah, this makes me want to go shoot somebody. I'm like, what? No. Yeah, no. Like what? But yeah, it's just no. it's just how the, the music, you know, and yeah. the songs can make you feel a certain emotion. No, nah, definitely. And TV shows. Yeah. Definitely. But to be able to talk about that verbally and yeah. say, all right, well, so what makes Express you, yourself. yeah, but what makes you feel that way? Like, yeah. why did that trigger that emotion? And how are you to, attaching it to your life? Exactly. But being able to be around young people like you would yeah. make them feel comfortable to be able to say, okay, I can talk about that. I don't have yeah. to feel like. I have to keep it to myself. And just understanding because that same scene that I just watched and my perspective of it might be totally different than his. Mm -hmm. It might be totally different than yours. Yeah. Be totally different than his or hers or whoever else. And just understanding it. You know what I mean? You might get a, a different point of view. Mm -hmm. Instead of like going to shoot somebody like whoever said, you just had that perspective of like, oh man, I want to uh, stop people's thinking like that. Like us. Yeah. Like we hear stuff like that and we're like, damn, how can we change that? Like how can right. we when you listen to music, that's not what you think of or attach yourself to. Or when you listen to this uh, Boosie song, you don't want to be in a club trying to fight all the time. Like, mm -hmm. nah, you just can actually have fun and enjoy it and just enjoy the lyrics and maybe just the simplicity of it and not the the feelings you get behind it. Mm -hmm. Show. And I wanted to say we're going to be opening it up real soon. We're working with the people right now. So, like, we're going to be having a uh, post up and stuff where people can actually get involved in that. And follow if you page. want to, you could as well. Of so, course. yeah, follow the page. Make sure y'all get in on that because that's changing the conversation. That's real work. And that's something that's, like, real different cutting edge, like, mm -hmm. as far as, like, social interactions and things of that sort. People aren't on that. So that's, a, that's something that's just going to break the monotony of, conversation and ownership as well as um personality and mental health mm -hmm. you know that's a lot of what stack over shine is about i love it mm -hmm. yeah i would say a prime example to music it will be kendrick lamar if you listen to all his albums it's really his journey through life like section 80 or 8.0 however people pronounce it that's his childhood in compton good kid mad city it's when he hopped off the porch and got to the streets. Mm. The Pimp of Butterfly is when he left Compton and explored that the world was bigger. And that's why I was dedicated to Tupac. You know, damn, it's kind of like he found himself. And then Mr. Morales is personal, how he's talking about his father issues and that his growing up, his cousin being in the closet, growing up, how they used to make fun of his cousin. Mm. But now it's like, dang we really contribute to the stress of their cousin. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, there's media and then there's reality. You feel me? Like, like power. I like power the TV show, but there's no type of way people are dropping like that and the feds are not really on there. <laughs> right. And you feel me? People will sit here like Snowfall, BMF. I like all them shows, but they're missing that this is entertainment. And then they forget that's in a whole different era when life was different. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You know, they try to imitate that. Now you got people, Facebook name. My name is Demetrius Flinnery. Man, you was in football when we was growing up. Like, <laughs> calm down. 
<laughs> you feel me? It's um, it's stuff like that, but it shows the power of media. And what you show yourself, you'll start imitating. You feel me? Like if you show in media, all crooks and criminals are black and brown people. What are you gonna start believing? If you keep showing that, you know, when people say... That's like when I see a white person yeah. in the van. And it's a conversation. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think yeah. you're about to, like, to, like, mass murder somebody. Not like. if it's a backtrack. I just want to... You say that, and it just always it just reverts back to, like, the story situation. Like, mm -hmm. That's exactly. why can't put a picture on... Or a persona on a, anything in life. Because this is how you just say, you see a white man in the van, you automatically are you kidnapped. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> like, you see a you see a a, a Hispanic person, you automatically think they're an immigrant, or you yeah, see a no whoever fucking a freaking mm -hmm. um uh uh what are you call a rab just I just call that that's what shit. they used to call me. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. You just can't attach <laughs> people like them that. negative yeah. thoughts like that. <laughs> <laughs> them <laughs> negative <laughs> thoughts like that, man. Yeah, when we was younger, they used to call me the A rab because my little long curly hair and I'm light skinned. <laughs> That's, that's clear up, man. <laughs> and then again, it's a conversation in that because um, the same thing everyone is sitting here having a different expression to say means that we all have to talk out all of our own mm -hmm. interpretations and yeah. align that conversation. So once again, like the setting we have Friday night, we all left that room feeling much more pers like, and that's not even the last event that I went to of yours. So where again, I left the room feeling much more personally connected to everyone I just talked to. Like I walked around and, and spoke to each vendor. I actually got their story. I feel like I know these people now. It's not like you're just high and buying these people. You're actually talking to them. And with the poetic justice, the intention behind that is to actually have a conversation about what everyone is thinking and trying to find a way to align that and make a message that could allude to what actually we're trying to do, which mm -hmm. is not the social norm. You Absolutely. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those things all come together. It's going to take a minute. Of course, we're going to have to, just like with us, us three here, it takes a minute for us to get past a couple of things. A first three ideas with him is going to be some shoot-offs. It's going to be some <laughs> F everybody. You feel me? It's going to be some, man, they tried to get me back in third grade. It's going to be some. <laughs> it's going to Hey, when I say we could talk about some Raymond Park days where we really done been got it, but <laughs> but even then though, it's but gonna I be some it. conversations yeah. like we had before we started with the yeah. Moses things. Right. But then and then we got to here, and now we're in a, a, a sensible location <laughs> where okay, this aligns, and now this is what our generation and as Stack Over Shine's conversation is going to be yeah. moving forward. So mm -hmm. that's what is essentially alluding to. For the for the gang member that yeah. called your phone, <laughs> you know what? And I told him I said it's okay because I'm about to have a conversation about this. No, yeah. you ain't got to. Oh no, but I do. No, let's talk, because, talk. Because go, if you go, feel that talk. way, somebody else might, and it needs to be yeah. a conversation because it's very inaccurate. Exactly. Like I was offended yeah. for you. Like, what do yeah. you mean? Like this yeah. is. And two, I'm like, like you're a grown like, man, and you got red on. But I was just and like, to make a point today, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is my last point. I'm sorry I keep cutting you yeah, off, but uh, we, we that's one thing we all try to work on between each other, making you know, sure we let every, everyone express <laughs> their point. He's trying to let you take a but breath, like count to three. <laughs> when when we were in school, and rest in peace, Dijon. When he passed away, everyone around the school was throwing this up. Mm. Now, would you think this is a, a gang sign or no? No. Everyone is throwing threes up for Dijon. That's something that we continuously do to this day. I throw a three up. Like wow. that's what we do. That's that's just to represent Dub C. This comes exactly. Yeah. And if you open it up a little bit, you open the three. It, it represents the whole Warren Central. And this is what they have us throwing mm -hmm. up at pep rallies. Wow. So you know these are things that mm -hmm. this is where your mind is at, and this mm -hmm. is this is what we're trying to reverse, and this is what we're trying to ignite. You know, just people. The conversation to align it and, and make sure it evolves from just simple minded, low level things. But just like he said, he didn't want me to bring it up, but mm -hmm. it needed to be brought up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's not him. Like it's not only those, him. It's not I know. Only and that's him. why sure. I was like, okay, no, this needs to be and, a conversation. Yeah, it just like, like I said, like I just brought back up, like when you was talking about the uh, man in the white van, it just shows like your mindset and where you are or how you think about or how you perceive the world in a negative way. And there's sometimes there's just like no negative intent behind that. Like that white man in the van might be going to pick his kids up. He got a van because he got five, ten of them. You know what I mean? Or he got so, some carpet in the back. He about exactly. to go lay some carpet. He about to like. go lay some carpet or something. You know what I mean? 
and it just sucks that people do have them like first initial thoughts when they see certain but, things and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's just like what Stack Overshine represents. The way yeah. the media portrays, because exactly. any movie that is yeah. a kidnapper. Or kind of like how you grew up, like your, your surroundings and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, you feel me? You might have grew up in a neighborhood where you knew a lot of people that got kidnapped in white vans. It's right, yeah. Us, we know a lot of people that might have passed, whatever the case is, or we know a lot of people that um did certain things or whatever. And even with the hand signs thing, we knew a lot of people that did that in the hood, rocking around, seeing people throwing stuff up, and just, mm-hmm. again, just trying to take that away, like, take all the negativeness away yeah. and understanding, like, there's 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 no reason for people to think so negatively when they first see something, as mm-hmm. far as, like, a red star, or if it was a blue C, like, on the cookie sign, the red star on the Macy's, yeah. uh, Target sign, anything, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just taking that, having that, that, that first thought, like when you see a Walmart little yellow dot flower looking thing, that's you. Oh, Walmart. Oh, right, yeah. No, Probably food, groceries, t shirts. That's what we want you to think of when you see that red star. Mm-hmm. Oh, Stack Over Shine. Business opportunities, networking, Absolutely. growth, uh, knowledge, just, just whatever it is. Changing positivity. that narrative. Changing yeah, that real. narrative. No, we're not going to think like that anymore. This exactly. is how we're going to think moving forward. Exactly. And, you know, and then this is what I want to share too, like working at the movie industry, for example. You know what my boss told me one time? What? You're popular in the mall without being a drug dealer. Wow. In my head. So he was, That's, so that she, was, so she, she was surprised she, that you're popular. Look, I'm being nice because I really hate her as a person. Yeah, now well, I'm going to tell you why. Do I need to censor this? No, you don't. <laughs> she knows I don't like her. <laughs> she knows I don't like her. But um, the thing about it is, so we had a walkthrough that day. It was the first time I actually met a black GM. In the regal industry because mm. Indianapolis is non-existent and you know I kind of felt I'm thinking now black people you understand what I'm talking about let's see how he is is he house or field you know I'm on that because that is a real thing wait a minute what did you just say house or field what is that <laughs> what the you about to get all right so here's the thing the- here's the thing sometimes when a black person gets a power like into like when they are given power sometimes they'll like betray themselves to appease mm. the white higher up okay. at times and he was not like that at all he came in i said yeah the cleaners on the yeah they don't do shit around here this is my guy huh? right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, yeah so to give me some. while we were talking <laughs> look no nah, he he from new york he from brooklyn okay. so i'm like oh yeah he he own that so while we was talking right we're code switching in front of her, and she don't understand that because she was trying to explain what another manager was doing, and he did not understand what she was saying. So I had to step out. I was like, "Bro, look, it's white man's burden that she's talking about." Oh, I know. Oh, okay, man, I'll help you with that. Wow. And she didn't know that, but we know that. It's like it's the thing that we just know. So after that, he he like who I am as a person. I mean, he like got a bright future here. Cool. He and I was leaving, but <laughs> so <laughs> we're talking right. And a little background: this was a week after I cussed her out, so I really didn't like her. And she's like, "You know, you're appreciating around here." And I'm like, "Whatever, bro. You know, you're you're like everyone knows you in the mall. Like you're popular being a drug dealer." Was that her? Was that her real voice? <laughs> So, so you know, you know, you feel me. I ignored that until she started criticizing how my workers were, telling we were inappropriate how we were acting. Now, so I'm like, what are you talking about? She was saying how you are from the customer, all that, bro. They were enjoying the conversation with us. Well, you know, I was like, ma'am, it's called code switching because the customer was black. (laughs) Yeah. Well, a plastic wrap. Look, the, the customer was black, and she done. I was like, ma'am, that's called code switching. You don't understand it, so you look at it as in it's unprofessional. I said, me and Leon did it in front of you. That's how he understood what you were saying. I was like, you want something unprofessional? You just call me a drug dealer. Yeah. Well, that's not. No, it's not. I said, that's not cool. I said, do you know how hard I had to fight to get that stigma off of me? <laughs> no, like for real. Like yeah. someone came to my job and recognized me from Stack Over Shine mm-hmm. and told me, I like what y'all doing, man. I thought he was like a drug dealer or something in front of everybody. I'm like, wow. nigga. Oh. But you told me back then where we from, that is a, like a symbol of power. But it's kind of like I have that stigma on me. Yeah. 
And then she tries to argue with me saying that's not correct. No, what I'm saying is whatever. No, no there ain't no saying to that. can't make that okay at all. But, you know, so I love it. Then I just, this is why I really love the movies. She lied to get my one friend fired, who was also black, because she was afraid she was not conversational with her. Um, no, this is real. This go back to what we were saying, the perception of stuff. But she kind of lied to corporate, makes it like we were unworkable. And when you say that in them type of industries, it, it puts a stigma on you. And that goes back to what bro was saying next to and stuff. Like when we went to Raymond Park and everything, we were the only kids from the projects. So every little thing we did, Mr. Reedy is my first probation officer. Oh. Like everything we did, it was me and Dub and Monte in the office with this damn fish tank. Looking like bro. Wow. And he's talking to us like we criminals. <laughs> but that's how school does kids of yeah. color. Well, they strict to the punishment of stuff. Mm -hmm. You already send people up to be in that cycle, then you surprised why they locked up. Because mm -hmm. you already had them in that you're a criminal attitude of stuff, you feel mm -hmm. me? And it's really about the perception, like where you from and us even being the business world, every time we say from we from post road, we get looked at. Oh, absolutely. Different. They don't say we soft though, so they come correct. But it's like that's that stigma on us. Oh, they um, I want to make you mad, bro. Like they right. own that type of time, and and that's what I was saying. You know, media has a big influence on a lot of those things. And you know, like when people watch Power, BMF, and everything, my like, bro, Power down. This is not real, please. Like, and even back to your point on perception. Like when I first I met Chase at a vendor event, and then we actually met here. And when he came, he purposely wore his ski mask. <laughs> and I, he, did, he told me this later, and I was like, why? He said, because I wanted to see what your reaction would be. He was yeah. like, and you gave me no reaction. He was like, it was like I didn't even have it on. He was like, that's when I knew I was going to fuck with you. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. Like, I just, it didn't even yeah. dawn on me. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't care if you got a ski mask on, so this is what we're about to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're here talking business. Well, we're right, yeah. Business like, it, I'm not worried about yeah. what you got on. Yeah. Yeah, now I want to clear why we call him A-Rap. <laughs> oh so, God. I've been knowing Vontae since I was three and four, right? Aw. So, you know, we, my cousin used to live next door to him in the vault, you know, Blackburn. So, when we got to watch that point, me and Dub swear that he was from Iraq. <laughs> and he's like, nah, man, I'm black. No, you're not, bro. Man, no, I you're not. That, how he came up, tied up with the shirt. Bro, he would come on time. He has swords, so we thinking, uh, he's from a whole nother country, bro. He's like, nah, bro. So we saw his mom, Mama May. Look, this is my mom. Man, up. He adopted. He adopted. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't nothing to it. Then he showed us that. I'm like, I just don't believe him, bro. I really don't believe him. But as we got older, okay, he's black. I think 13, we said, yeah, he's black. Yeah, he, wow, took he's me black. that long. I mean, look at him. <laughs> but then, as we grow older, like, especially when we both grow our hair now, people think me and him brothers with both our hair are, are bringing up. Yeah. Like, they be like, are y'all brothers? Nah, but that can go to a perception, like he was saying, too. Mm -hmm. Like, people think. I'm everything but black at times when my hair is pressed out or anything. They be, mm. hey man, you Dominican? No. Yeah. You smell out I'm black, fresh off the plantation. Oh black, my God. just black. <laughs> yeah, but they do it as a stigma that you gotta be mixed with something. Like remember that period in high school, white skin mixed people had the better hair. Mm. That's that person they put in your head mm. in school, you feel me? They put that like, you know, the colorism format. You mm. said it when you went to Creston. You feel me? Oh, he light skin. Hey, look, you got this. <laughs> hey, nah, chill nah, out. Nah, nah. <laughs> but to, to say on that stigma, though, like, it would just be. Because mm -hmm. Dominicans is black. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> but I'm a black American. Right, they be say, forgetting that part. Like, they say anything but black. They're some black people. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just the cultural stigma that, you know, what's y'all never America. know what's going to happen in on this show. Just, yeah, just no, follow no, it. Man, follow it. It's, it's just. just <laughs> we apologize. Yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. The but, main point of that is just the perception how people yeah. look at situations. And it takes people to say, okay, we're going to change that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what y'all doing. So, what you got there? 
from Stack Over Shine. Yeah, uh, got some merch. Merchandise. Yeah, sorry, please, sorry, bro. It's gotta be open. It's gotta be on Gotta be appreciated. Yeah. Good quality. Yeah, it's looking real nice. Yeah, nice and good too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to say, you know, you got the t shirt, but you ain't. You oh, yeah, that's yeah, real nice. Yeah. 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 Great quality. Yeah, that's real. That's heavy. That's yeah. nice. Good, nice I should have got green. And we got all I like what color did you, did you have on Friday? Lavender. Yeah, Lavender. I was nice. Everybody that one. That yeah, was that was real nice. nice. Mm-hmm. I was going with it today, but yep. it. All right, well, to wrap up, y'all got any closing comments before we, uh, and we will be having special interviews with each of them by themselves. Any, uh, you want to wrap up? Well, for me, um, I'm just glad that we're here all with each other again. You know, mm-hmm. I mean? Every time everybody watches us, it's growth. We're not talking about the same thing. You feel mm-hmm. me? We we coming in. If y'all actually pay attention to each episode, our outfits actually show that we moving up in the ladder in the world. You feel I me? I love it. <laughs> you know, like that's just what it is. I'm glad that we here with you for episode. You know, yeah. like the fourth one. You're my dog. You feel me? That's right. I'm glad you gave us a chance. Absolutely. Even though I don't know how to do the sign, but I guess I'll practice. It. <laughs> we gonna people love anyway. that picture, though. That picture of y'all trying to help me. <laughs> yeah. That one has been a favorite on the internet. I kept seeing the comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, I want to remind everybody uh, Poetic Justice. Y'all can reach out to us. Um, y'all can come out. We're going to be having, y'all going to see the team. You feel me? Uh, it's going to be talking about music, movies. We're going to be having a conversation about what you interpret aligning with everyone else interprets in the room to make sure we all leave with an aligned message that can make something positive happen. We're going to be having more information following the conference that's going on in May. It's going to be a three, four day conference. Stack Over Shine is going to have their own special dedicated uh, part for it. And you know that I mean Melissa's in there and she's going to be with us. So you know that I mean it's our generation. So y'all make sure y'all tap in with us on that. <laughs> we got. I need to come up with my own sign. <laughs> you throw the M. OG, like I gotta. I don't know. I gotta you practice. Be, you throw a little M up. Uh, you got to cross it up. Go to the west side down. We don't like the west side. That's probably where dude was from, the west side. But, but back to the, the, the it's real. because he watches all my episodes. I know you don't watch it. So oh, we, don't, I don't want no, man. Well, man. on the fifth episode, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we good. Y'all, but now, uh, make sure y'all follow up with us, too. We're going to have the pain ship coming next month. Chill vibe, intimate settings. Uh, again, I want to make sure we shout out you, and uh, Chase for the, the vendor and vibe and story time event. That was amazing, man. Y'all, we here every time. You know Absolutely. we ain't, man. I it's that. It. But uh, yeah, make sure y'all follow us and at Stack Over Shine. I'm the non-social one, Don Keanu Vante. When yeah. three underscores. <laughs> nah, yeah. I mean, they pretty much summed it up. Appreciate you for having us fourth time. You know, it's always special having us. Definitely tap into the merch. Get you some merch. Follow the page. We got events coming up out the ass this month or this whole year, really. Uh, March, tap in. March, sip and paint. Like Dub said earlier, that's going to be something huge. We're going to really promote and put out there. We want everybody to show out. We want you to be there, too. Absolutely. Hey, I'm uh, there. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're here for a fourth time. Thank you for having us in. Absolutely. Yeah, we're here to show out every time, give y'all something to watch for us. Yeah, because it's very entertaining. <laughs> it's our generation, man. This oh, ain't Charles. Yeah. This is our generation. Ours. Yep. And with this is the just, one I and mean, only, man. This is true of what the bridge and the gap is. Like, this yeah. is my vision. Just like when I said Friday night, you know, like seeing this play out is huge. And mm-hmm. I'm glad y'all part of it. We mm-hmm. appreciate you. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, this, oh, you got something to say? We're the captain now. For the captain now, what? All right, this has been Melissa Shaw with Our Generation. We are out. We are. Hey, he's coming. (laughs) All right, man, he's going.